Hello everyone. In today's video, we'll discuss isolation levels. This is a next topic in our advanced SQL series. Isolation levels determine how different users and processes accessing the database interact with each other. And in order to understand this video, you need to have an understanding of the concept of a transaction in a database. And I have a full video about this. It will now show up on your screen and you also have a link uh, in the description below. What is important to know is that we as a user can set the isolation level of our transaction. So essentially we can choose how our transaction will interact with other transactions. And the isolation level is a defined standard uh, in the ISO ANSI SQL 92 standard. There are different isolation levels described. However, the database developers can choose whether they want to implement these isolation levels and most choose to implement it, at least for the majors, major DBMSs or database engines also. However, the details of the implementation will differ. So the general concept will exist. The, it will have the same purpose. However, the details may vary. And I will make a few remarks over the course of this video when I know about the difference between MySQL that we'll be using for examples and other DBMS. So the isolation levels are described by situations or phenomena they allow or not. And these situations are, well, situations from the database when two users want to interact with each other, as in they want to read or they want to write the same data. So basically the way this situation is resolved will define what isolation levels we are on. So before we start discussing it, and we'll do many examples, therefore let's shortly make a setup. Setup will be very simple. There one prerequisite that you have that uh, I actually have uh, for you to follow this video is that you need to have a Docker installed, right? So here I'm on Windows, I have Docker desk desktop installed. Therefore, I can just go ahead here and do Docker run, and then dash dash name, our name that I know, MySQL, and then I will say dash e to set password, Michael's, uh, let's say MySQL root password. You need to set it, you need to set it to whatever you want. I just set it to one, two, three, four. I'll remove this container right after I finish recording, therefore no problem. Um, and then let's just here define a version, right? So MySQL eight and we need to run it, right? If you don't have this, if you run it for the first time, it will need to download the image. I already run it, therefore I have the image here on my local computer. Now I have two terminals because as I said, we'll be testing interactions between two users. So to connect to our database, what we need to do is we need to say docker exec dash it, then mysql bash. It's very simple, we are connected. Now I will repeat the same thing right here. Docker exec dash it mysql bash. So we are not yet connected to the database, but we are connected to our container that contains a database. And now I need to say here mysql dash u to name the user. We'll be using the root user. This is a bad idea. And it's also a bad idea to set the root password to 1234. Never do it. Uh, well, except maybe for this video. And I'll log in with this password to the mysql database. And now you can see we are logged in into a mysql database. Okay, and here I'll do the, essentially the same thing. mysql dash u root dash p to use password, one, two, three, four. And we are logged in into a MySQL database. One more thing we need to do is we need to say, use MySQL to use the MySQL database. Okay, now what we need to do is we need to create an employees table. A link to a file that creates this table is in the description. This is a link to GitHub. You can just either copy or download the file. And then you have to just copy and paste it into one of the terminals. So here I also do it. I have copied it. I will paste it right here. And I will commit. And actually looks like everything has been successful. So we can try to select star from employees where employee ID equals 100, let's say. And we have a result. It doesn't really matter for the for this video. It doesn't really matter 
what is in the table although you can take a look in the, in the inserts it just inserts it just creates a table and then inserts 10 rows into it the first phenomena we'll discuss are dirty reads and dirty reads occur when one transaction reads uncommitted changes from another transaction right so the changes are not committed so they are not yet official however a different transaction reads it so we can take a look at an example specifically in mysql because for example in postgres or in oracle this phenomenon is impossible to observe because we cannot set such a isolation level for it to be possible so what we need to do first off we need to set the transaction isolation level and you can set these isolation levels usually on a transaction or on a session in this video we'll work with transactions however for now i will more or less ignore this statement i just want to show you uh, how this works and for this i need to change the default settings because with the default settings on mysql we would not be able to observe this phenomenon okay so i set the transaction isolation level then i say begin to begin a transaction and i just select employee id and then salary from employees where employee id equals 100 all right so we have an employee id of 100 and salary of 24000 now in the second terminal i say begin to begin a transaction by the way you should always begin all your statements sql statements with a begin to be able to then roll back a transaction especially if you want to read or write some data update employees so here i'll try to change the salary now right so i'll update employees set salary let's give um, this man a raise or this woman a raise let's increase it to uh, twenty-five thousand. where employee id equals 100 and i hit enter right rows matched one changed one okay and now i select it once again what i can see is salary of twenty-five thousand, which is different than here right However, what I can do now is here, I can say just roll back and I have just rolled back my changes. This means if I execute this once again, I'm back to 24,000. And this is what we call a dirty read, right? So this 25,000 was a dirty read because it was never official. It has never been officially published to, to the database, right? This was just like local so-called, or you can understand it as local changes to this transaction that happened right here but not to the one that was uh, running here and this is what we call a dirty read because we have read like somebody else work and this uh, row that has not been committed might be a mistake maybe somebody has made a mistake or maybe it's just work in progress right because maybe there is a process which first inserts the row and then before committing i don't know does an update on all of it or does something else with it and then if our process maybe it's an automatic process extracts such a row and then starts doing something else with it there can be very serious consequences so this was it for the dirty read let's currently commit in both windows just so that we know that we are not in a transaction Control plus l in my case to clear the, the terminal and let's go to the second phenomena which is non-repeatable reads and non-repeatable reads occur when a select statement is executed in a transaction then another transaction modifies the rows returned by the select statement in the first transaction and then the select statement from the first transaction is executed again However, this time, because the results were modified, it returns different results. And this is actually a default behavior. So this phenomena will appear with default, uh, def default isolation level in the BMSs like Oracle or Postgres, but not in MySQL. This is why we once again need to begin with set transaction isolation level read committed okay um there is an error it's because i can't spell committed okay and now once again we begin a transaction and let's currently select the same thing right so maybe i can uh, i can do it here okay i will select a different employee right with 101 employee id and i have selected like a person right then in the second window what i will do is i'll once again say begin I will say an update 
I will set a salary once again. I know. Let's just try to set it to twenty thousand this time. For employee with employee ID two hundred one. Right. So I have executed it. Now let's go back right here. Let's check. And one important thing: this time we commit here. Right. So in the previous example we did not commit because then we rolled back. This time we commit. So now here we are in a single transaction without a commit or rollback, right? Here, here I have began the transaction. Now I execute this. And what I see is 20,000. So I see the changes that are applied here. So it's not like it's wrong, right? That I see it. It's just with the current settings, how it works. As I said, on Postgres on Oracle, this is the default behavior. If you do nothing, if you do not set this transaction isolation level, this is how it will work. So basically, this part that the, or actually this part, the 17,000 is in this case called a non repeatable read because we have read it once. However, we are not able to consistently read it once again because this time, rightfully so, the changes here were applied and were committed. But once again, it's not like the previous phenomena or the previous isolation level that permits such a situation is is bad it, it has its purpose but once again this is what we call a non-repeatable read right so when we have a transaction open we select something the other transactions modify it commits and then we select it once again and we get a different result okay so let's commit so that we are sure that here we are not in a transaction. Let's clear the terminal and let's move to phantom reads. The third and the last phenomenon that we'll take a look at this in this video are phantom reads. And phantom reads occur when one transaction executes a select statement that returns some records, and then a second transaction adds or removes records that would be returned by the first select or the select in the first transaction, and then commits these new rows or these deleted rows. So then if the select is run once again from the first transaction and it returns these added or removed rows, then this is what we call a phantom read. And this is just a special case, in my opinion, of a non-repeatable read, but non-repeatable reads refer to an update and uh, phantom reads refer to an insert or a delete. And you can try to recreate this in MySQL. So what we need to do is we need to say set transaction isolation level repeatable read so we actually don't need to do it this is a small lie because this is the default in mysql and then we can say begin and then we can say select employee id salary from employees where employee id between 99 and 101 and we get two employees okay now in the second transaction let's do an insert and i will actually leave the leave the insert for you in the same file that creates the employee table so you can get it from there and just to save time of writing a lengthy insert i'll paste it i'll insert this and i will commit this transaction now i'll repeat the select here and i can tell you that this is the point in time where the differences start or when they are shown right because i have selected mysql as the dbms where we will be running our checks or our tests like our examples because it supports well the first two phenomenons however currently i have set an isolation level that permits the database to return for us the row which we added here because here in this table currently this where clause should return us also this 99 or not should it theoretically up to the standard it can return this row and the can is the key because it can but does not have to if it doesn't it still fits the standard right because the standard says okay at a certain isolation level that we are currently running you have to ensure that all the previews are not returned, right? And this is, if, if you have something extra, right? So if you are preventing this phenomenon with a certain isolation level, this is still fine. And it seems that MySQL does, because if it would not, 
we uh, would have seen this row already in our result set right here. So now what we can do is, for example, so here, no matter how many times I execute it, we still are getting the same result. So now if I commit and then try to execute the select, we can see the 99 here, but it's no longer a phantom read because I have committed the transaction, right? So you can see also that here we have a nice organized uh, way or a nice consistent view. And this is because MySQL, the repeatable read isolation level is basically very similar to the last, to the highest one. But to this, we'll get in a second. But back to the phantom reads. So if we had this 99 here before, you could say that this is very similar to this for the previous category, so non-repeatable read. But I think it's up to the technicalities how this works. So in the on the back end, in the database storage engine, the prevent prevention of updating a row that has been selected by a explicit where clause is different than prevention of insertions of new or deletions of new records in a range. This just happens differently, and this is why I think we have two separate categories for it. And for a user, for us, yeah, it's very similar, right? It's a right operation. Now that we know the three phenomenons, we can easily describe the isolation levels. And some of them you have already seen in the SQL statements that we were executing. And an isolation level is, as I said, defined by the phenomenon that can occur when a transaction is performed with this level. And this is key, can, not must, right? And the SQL standard specifies which anomalies must not occur with which isolation levels. But if you have a lower isolation level and prevents like a higher isolation level anomaly, it's also good. And I think it's best if we take a look at this in a table, right? So basically here on the, on the top, we have our phenomenon. So we have the dirty reads, non-repeatable reads and phantom reads. And then here we have our isolation levels defined by the SQL ISO ANSI standard. So here we have four isolation levels. Starting from the bottom, we have the read uncommitted and we are setting this right in order to see a dirty read and with read uncommitted, we are seeing all the changes usually done by all the transactions currently in the database, even if they are not committed, right? Hence the name read uncommitted. And dirty reads are allowed, non-repeatable reads are allowed, and phantom reads are allowed. Now, the next isolation level is read committed. This is a, a default in Postgres and Oracle. And here we cannot see only dirty reads, right? So dirty reads are not allowed. However, non-repeatable reads are allowed and phantom reads are allowed. However, here we have to be careful because, or be careful. Some DBMSs will actually not allow uh, non-repeatable reads on read committed isolation level. This is why always, if you want to use these, you have to reference the documentation. And then we have the rep repeatable read isolation level that does not allow dirty reads, does not allow repeatable reads. However, it allows phantom reads but as we have seen in MySQL, MySQL does not also allow, allow phantom reads. And then we have that on a repeatable read isolation level. And then we have the serializable isolation level, which does not allow any of it. So actually the serializable isolation level is the highest isolation level. It ensures the highest consistency it also comes at the cost, right? So it's not like the serializable isolation level is the best. Uh, and we'll jump shortly to some examples to, to see, but it comes at a cost. And actually in MySQL, repeatable read and serializable isolation levels are very similar. And this is why I always tell you, you need to reference the documentation because the implementations may differ. So I think Oracle out of these four isolation levels only implements two. Right, and Oracle is like the most or the, the leading DBMS. I think it has like one extra, which is special to Oracle. And 
Talking about special, I have one more example prepared, right? Let's take a look at how Postgres defines it, right? So here we can see the four isolation levels they got from the other way around that I have them, but also here we have seen the phenomenons. So Postgres documentation also describes like serialization anomaly. So it's essentially if you execute the ongoing transactions, if you commit them at a different order, then the result is different, right? So with the serializable, it's not permitted. However, here you can see why I had to choose in order to show you a dirty read. I had to choose MySQL, not Postgres, that I'm most more used to is because read and committed isolation level, even read and committed, so the lowest one, does not allow in Postgres a dirty read, right? So it's not possible to create a dirty read um, with the isolation levels. Then it's all standard or standard. And here also repeatable read does not also allow a phantom read, right? So this is what we have also seen in MySQL, right? So with a repeatable read isolation level, phantom reads in Postgres are also not allowed, right? By the serialization anomaly is allowed, right? And this is the difference in Postgres between serializable isolation level and repeatable read isolation level. So once again, this is the isolation levels and and even better, the way this is implemented, right? Because we, we are say, talking about as a concept, the implementation underneath is where the differences between different DBMSs and database engines uh, really can be seen and can be discussed. Okay, let's now jump to some examples. Okay, I have committed both of our terminals just to make sure that we are not inside any transaction. Let's try to set the isolation level to serializable, right? And then let's try to go through and observe the phenomena that we have observed, right? So the two, the dirty read and the non-repeatable read and see if this is prevented and if yes, how. So essentially set transaction level serializable. And now we know what it does, right? We set the isolation level for the next transaction. And this is Postgres specific, uh, MySQL specific that it sets it for the next transaction. So I execute this, right? And I have an error and it's because I was talking too much and I forgot about isolation. Okay. And now let's begin a transaction and let's select employee ID and salary from employees where employee ID equals 100, right? So we have seen that already 24, thousand now in the second window let's say begin to begin a transaction and let's say update employees employees set salary equals i don't know 10 where employee id equals 100 and now i hit enter and what we can see is a waiting transaction so essentially nothing happens this is waiting and this is the mechanism that enforces the serializability of the transactions in work. Because we in the first terminal must have a consistent view of the data, so it cannot be modified by any other transaction. And here you can already see that this transaction has ended with an error. This most likely happens or not most likely, this for sure happens after a timeout time that is defined in the database settings, I think by default it's one minute and it was already one minute my time because I needed to make a short break. Okay, so this is a dirty read. We see essentially how the database just prevented us from getting a dirty read, right? If I execute the select once again, here we see the very same thing. Okay, I'll now commit this transaction and I will now commit this transaction. Let's clear the terminals and let's try to go into the non-repeatable read. So let's try to do a non-repeatable read. So this is where we will commit the change that comes here, right? So we do the same thing, set transaction isolation level serializable. We begin this time. Let's also execute the select, but with 101. So this is where the salary is 20,000. And now here, let's begin. And let's write an update, right? So we'll update. And I think currently you should see that the setup is exactly the same as we had it before. So you should be able to predict what happens if I hit enter. And what happens is we wait once again. And now if you waited around a minute, 
this would once again end with an error. However, what we can do is we can come in here in this and write a commit and enter. So we executed a commit. By this, we ended the transaction that was here. And underneath, the database has released a log from the robot. So it said, okay, I don't need a consistent view of this row anymore. Therefore, you can update it. And this transaction has just updated this row, right? So currently, because this transaction has ended, if I begin a new one implicitly by, um, if I begin a new one implicitly, I still see the 20,000. And this is because I did, we did not commit this transaction here, right? So if I say commit and now I execute select, the salary has been changed to 10. And if we test it for a phantom read, the behavior will be exactly the same. So it would not actually do an insert as with the repeatable read. So the default in MySQL, as we have seen previously, but it would also wait. And only when we said, okay, commit here, then it would execute this part here. So now hopefully you see why the serializable isolation level is not the best one, right? Because what you have just seen is one of the points on the cons list, right? It really makes the concurrent access for multiple users or processes to the data difficult because you will be running in these timeouts a lot, right? As you have seen, right? Here we selected something, we were doing nothing with it, but when we have it sort of selected in our transaction, nobody else can really do anything with it. It has its place, it has its purpose. However, it's not like one size fits all solution. It's definitely not uh, the best. And this is why I think I don't know a major database, a DBMS where this would be a default. So this would be it for our isolation levels. After this video, you should have a basic idea about how this mechanism works. And you should always remember that if you really want to use it and change the default isolation level, you must read the documentation uh, with the implementation of this concept in the DBMS that you are using, because it does differ. And we have seen a few examples, right, with the Oracle differences, with the Postgres differences, and with the MySQL differences compared to the standard, for example. And once again, what is also important is that there is no better or worse isolation level. Uh, they are just different, right? All of them have their purpose. And as most of the things in software engineering, uh, they come with a list of pros and a list of cons. And you as a developer have to decide uh, what's best for your use case. So this is it for the video. If you have any questions, post them down in the comments. I think to sort of continue this topic, a video about locking mechanism and what's a pessimistic and what's optimistic lo locking and what are like table locks, row locks and how this is uh, done uh, is coming. However, this is for the future. And for now, I'd like to thank you all for watching and see you next time.